Why are these people doing this just to make a plaza when we already have so many plazas in the world? It's a bad idea. We have too much plaza. Why make one more? Yes. Okay. Why make one more plaza when we have so many in the world? by this administration is pervasive. 
and it's unacceptable. And when we see that our park and our taxpayer money is going to destroy our environment, and we say, well, how come? And the parks then gives us redactions like this. Ridiculous. We then have to say, <coughs> what are they hiding? Right. So, yeah. 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 What are they hiding? So we continue to foil. And as Enid said, we are at a point where the parks department is going to have to show us the money. Yeah. Show us oh, what yeah. it is yeah. that they are hiding. Yeah. Will not accept the fact that when we ask questions of our parks department and they then redact and they give us three answers out of 18 questions, uh, not exactly. So for us, this is all about a fight that will continue. We have a great group of people, the Friends of Fort Greene Park. people of our of our self determination of what we want in our communities and council member Cumbo we're calling on you to support your constituents a bait and switch Thank with you. our Thank money. You. Yeah! yeah. is a treasure of Olmstead and Vokes. Yes, yes. And Olmstead and Vokes never intended their beautiful parks to be part of the city. They were supposed to be separate from the city. So you could go into their wonderful parks at Fort Green Park, at Grants, at Central Park, and be away from the city. Yeah. So while there's a time and a place for parks without borders, parks without borders should look at parks like Sunset Park, but Commodore not Park. Commodore Park, but not at the great Olmstead and Vokes parks of Fort Greene Park and other parks. Thank you. Trees not cement. Trees not cement. My name is Mary Lou Houston and 
I'm here to talk about the northwest corner of Fort Greene Park. That corner has the highest density of shade trees anywhere in the park. It also has the highest density of residents living along its borders on both sides of Myrtle Avenue. Uh, those shade trees all year round are important to all of us for what they contribute to our air. But in the summertime, they're even more important. They give an escape to people who do not have air conditioners, who cannot afford air conditioners, to get out of their homes and have some relief from the heat. It's, I can't imagine that the conservators of our park are cutting down mature shade trees without first planting replacements. And that takes decades to replace a mature tree. Uh, the cost restitution of removing, replacing the mature shade trees is over $800,000. And there's no guarantee that replacement trees will be planted in the northwest corner of the park. They can do them, plant them anywhere in the city and still qualify as replacement of trees. Uh, help save our shade, our trees, and, our mounds, and mounds and keep our park the historic park that it is and has been for over 200 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I want to thank the kindergarten class from the Compass School over here in Carlton. us one day and you need the trees and the birds and the bees and everything else so thank you for your beautiful signs and your chanting yeah. and for walking over here. Bravo. Thank you. Bravo. And so um, that's what we're looking at now. Uh, yes, we need to panic. Large trees are one of the most important ways to protect our environment. If we're going to continue as a species, we need large trees. We large need large trees. We 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 need large trees. to absorb water runoff and so we need to stop the slaughter of the large trees and the removal of the mounds. They're really important for our environment. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. In her own words at a town hall meeting, Laurie Combo said that for every tree that is going to be removed, it is going to be replaced by three additional new trees. But in the Parks Department's own words on their website, it says, Benefits are directly linked to tree size, and a large healthy tree removes almost 70 times more air pollution than a newly planted small tree. We know there is as, mu there is as much as a 90% die-off of new trees that are planted. So why is there this denial of facts by Laura Combo, our council person? You, and she also said there may be differences of opinions. Now you can have differences of opinions, but you cannot have differences of facts, right? Yeah. Yeah. The science is the science, so let's not deny it. Uh, did you know that the city has a policy to increase resiliency that is led by the Mayor's Office of Recovery and Resiliency to protect against changing climate conditions, such as the frequency of future floods, heat waves, and increased precipitation did you know 
that the city has a policy to increase tree canopy by 30% by 2030, which is part of the effort to mitigate climate change. Right now, there is full tree canopy, as we just heard. The shade is spectacular. Woo! Carrots come to the playground on the north side because the south playground has no shade over it. So parents right. seek the shade. So how did we get here? How did we get to a place where the Parks Department plans to cut down 40 to 60 foot trees and add 43 feet of hardscape ground and then replace those trees with saplings that are the size of a baseball bat. And I wish I had a baseball bat here so you could visualize that. But that's not very big. So how does this remodeling of the park coordinate with New York City's policy to increase storm resiliency? Removing the two earthen mounds removes important land that absorbs rain and removes carbon from the atmosphere. And did you know that one tree can save the city as much as $450 a year by reducing energy use, storm water runoff, and by removing air pollutants and carbon? And let me quote from New York City Parks Commissioner Mitchell Silver. As a nationwide leader in planning and development, New York City is preparing for the effects of climate change by establishing a strategy to build stronger and smarter. Now, does he think that removing large trees is stronger and smarter? This is our parks commissioner. Street trees alone provide an annual value of $27 billion, billion with a B dollars for New York City. So uh, with that, um, I want to let you know that Sierra Club, I'm a member, participating member, is suing the Parks Department in the city of New York. Yeah. Yeah. They already have it. They have put in their motion. Now it's the Parks Department or the city of New York to respond to that. So um, why are they doing that? Because there was absolutely no environmental review. And why was there no review? Because the Parks Department said they didn't need to do one. That's it. And um, they, they are in violation, this is contrary to the New York State Environmental Quality Review Act, so that is why they're being sued, we're waiting for the response, we hope for a great outcome, you heard of the positive outcome before from Sandy on our last lawsuit, so that's good news, and I printed a few sheets, if anybody from the press is interested, uh, I have the Sierra Club statement and um, some background information. And shady all trees, not shady deal. <laughs> also, this is the page from the Parks Department. You should all be familiar with it, where they talk about the benefits of large trees. And everything that they're doing is contrary to what is on their own website. So yeah. thank you very much. Bravo. Thank you Bravo. Very much. I say, please listen. Look across the street. There's a dead tree they just planted. Oh, there's a tree yeah. barely alive. Yeah. There's a tree more alive, a tree more alive, a tree yeah. more alive. Guess yeah. what? That tree is also dying, but it has more life. They don't know what they're doing. They planted one million trees like this. How many? So I just recommend this book. The Overstory is a novel about trees and how important they are, and it just won the Pulitzer Prize. Oh, wonderful! Yeah. Just an additional point, from the standpoint of transparency, why are citizens forced to file repeated in Freedom of Information Act requests and then sue to get answers to simple questions like, how many trees are you cutting down? We hired our own arborist and then filed this uh, legal thing to get the Parks Department forestry report. They had misled all the approving bodies. That includes the community board and the uh, landmarks preservation. So understand, this is transparency issues. This is government at the local level refusing to give information about their spending our money and our common public property.
Thank you. Alicia. Hi, my name is Alicia Boyd, and I don't live in Fort Greene. I live in Crown Heights, Flatbush. And we are, too, fighting for our green spaces there. Along the perimeter of the Book of Botanic, Book of Botanic Gardens, they're proposing the largest residential development in Brooklyn. And again, Lori Combo is responsible for that area. And again, we are told time and time again that environmental impacts are going to be done and then they don't get done. And that we have to file lawsuits, just like in Fort Greene, to get them to adhere to the law. But this is a policy and a program that happens all over New York City, where they're taking vital pieces of land, all of our green spaces, and they're selling it for profit so that they can make money, so they can fill their own coffers for their own political agendas. And we need to start standing together and coming together, not as individual lawsuits, but as a class action lawsuit. That's so great. Matthew Weinstein <laughs> from Brooklyn for Peace. That's my organization. But I'm here today because I care about trees. But there's another story here. There's a story about, oh, our city is broke. We have no money. But they have $3 billion for Amazon to come in. They have billions to make neighborhoods nice so that the new developments will look nice and pristine for the gentry that are moving in. But it other neighborhoods, neighborhood. if somebody alluded to Myrtle Avenue, that gets none of the funding. So the question is, where are our tax dollars going? Why does the city plead poverty? Today, I posted a picture on my Facebook page of overflowing trash barrels in that gem of Brooklyn, Prospect Park, that does not get the attention that it deserves. It does not get the funding that it deserves. It is an absolute jewel that should be preserved it should be well funded. Instead, they have to go to private corporations to get pittances for it. And meanwhile, the sidewalks deteriorate, the trash. This was midweek, mind you, not after a busy weekend. Sorry, we don't have the staff. Well, how about taking the $10 million that's going to some contractor for cement right. and, put and, some fancy, and some fancy designer to design this plaza and hire, you know, 700, 1,000 yeah. new park workers at middle class union wages that will enrich our communities and they'll be able to clean our parks and our streets. That's what it's all about. Wrong priorities. And we've got to tell the mayor and we have to tell Lori, Lori, what's the story? We need you to speak out now. Lori, Lori, what's the story? We need you to speak out now. Lori, Lori, what's the story? We need you to speak out